Um, my name is Patrick Allard. The E is mute, and you can follow me on Twitter or get my email address. About me and my accent, I'm coming from Belgium, so not far from France, uh, same country than Greece or, or other um, PHP internals. Um, I'm a PHP internals. I contrib sometimes contribute to PHP. I'm also a RFC voter, and I am the author of an, an extension called APM. So if you want to have more information that you usually have in error logging mechanism and something that is native to PHP, you just install APM and you can have your issues in a database or with stack trace, with additional information, get parameters, and so on and so on. So, but <coughs> I also have a Drupal confession here, uh, is that I have never used Drupal. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not the worst thing. I'm a core developer of another CMS. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you can say that we have much more problems, so we need more debugging techniques, so uh, <laughs> feel free to do so. <coughs> but debugging what? There are many things that can go wrong or that you want to understand your system. Uh, it can be at the level of PHP itself. <coughs> Uh, it can be at the, uh, at the level of your system, so outside the boundaries of the PHP process. It can also be related to networking. <coughs> so those are the three categories that I'm going to cover. But before we start, there is one technique which, is, which does not fall into those categories. And it's, for me, it's the most powerful technique. I'm using it almost every week. And this is the rubber <laughs> duck debug. So I, I see many, many yes here. I think it's much more popular in the United States than in Europe. But who is used, uh, who is used to rubber duck debugging? Hands, please. Hands, please. A few. OK, I, <coughs> I explain, explain what the rubber duck debugging is. It's that, for example, you have an issue, a problem, and you decide to bring it on Stack Overflow, just an example. No. Uh, write, you write down your question, and then you realize that the way you write it, it doesn't make any sense. <coughs> Raise your hands. Who knows that? That feeling, oh, I'm not alone. Cool. Uh, then you have to rethink exactly what information you need to provide to have an accurate answer. And sometimes you realize that you are just approaching the problem from the wrong perspective. And sometimes you start again from scratch and you find your answer. What happened here is that you find the solution yourself just by, uh, by providing more information and you really try to figure out what the problem is to someone who has no clue about your context. So you have to give everything. So the rubber duck, I always have some cool rubber ducks with me. <laughs> I have also a super rubber duck. <coughs> so, uh, what I uh, last last week I had a good example of rubber duck debugging. So, no, I'm not crazy. I'm going to talk to my dog, but this is how it works. <laughs> so, I had a problem. I put a die in my code. The die entered the code, but still I don't have the information I I require in my database. So I. I review the code and I try to put some breakpoints and so on, but still no information in my database. So I took my brother, sorry, it was that one. <laughs> I, my first one. My, I took my ninja um, duck and I talked with him. There's many of them, big ones. And okay, so I, I think my logic is correct. Everything is good, but ev nothing is in the database. But are you sure you, you know, the stupid rubber duck question, are you sure you do the, yeah, I'm sure. Are you sure you're, you're visualize the data of the correct database? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it is. The stupid questions sometimes answer your question. And that's what, why a stupid rubber duck was more powerful than the breakpoint I had with Xdebug on the remote system. That's it. You have, apparently it works also with real ducks. <laughs> I never tried. <laughs> that ducks too. You can try at home. You have plenty of ducks. 
Unfortunately, that <laughs> cannot solve everything, yes. I like it. And because some of you don't, don't know the rubber duck debugging, offer you some rubber ducks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free after the show, uh, the talk, sorry. <laughs> the first debugging techniques, which is the quick and dirty, it's not an advanced one, but it's one that is really effective, it's using die. Do I enter this piece of code? I say code. And if you put a die and you see that there is nothing that happens differently, probably you're not going to in, uh, into there. Often I use a Vardon, but just to display the content of a variable. Often it's, it's, very, it's sufficient to have that to, to debug your problem. If this is a bit too complex and I repeat myself, I do die and Vardons and I change the content of die, um, of Vardon, then I'm, I'm, I'm having the wrong approach. Then I need a real PHP deb debugger tool and this one, uh, the, the most famous one is Xdebug. It's an extension that is separate from, from the kernel, and it's written by Derek Credence. Thanks. Who is not familiar with Xdebug? No hands. Cool. Because I'm not going to see Xdebug. To me, it's like regular PHP debugging, and I, wa I wanted to focus on something else. But if you have a question about Xdebug, how it works, or want a demonstration, feel free to ask after, after this talk. Who is using PHP DBG? Ver no hands. <laughs> Do you know that PHP DBG comes by default since PHP 5.6? And that m most certainly, unless you have an old version of PHP, if you just write PHP DBG on the command line, it, you're going to have it. Look after them. The This newcomer is native with PHP 5.6, but it does not replace Xdebug, the one. It provides various information, it lets you breakpoint, it lets you do step-by-step -step debugging, but it's mostly a command line tool, which is quite similar to the C equivalent DBG. I can show you how PHP DBG works with slides, but honestly, I prefer doing it in live. So, I'm going to do this. So that I can still hear in my voice. PHPDBG on the command line, I have some, some files here like um, a test file which contains some gradings. If I want to run it, I'm just writing PHPDBG and then the file. If I just do this, it loads PHPDBG but it doesn't run the content of my test script for now. What I can do is testing the content. If you want to, b to know more about the possible commands, just type, just type help. And it shows you an explanation of all keywords. If, um, so I'm going to list it again. I want to breakpoint on something. I can breakpoint on a line number, on the name of a function, on the class method, and so on. Just use break, for example, and I want to stop on Let's say line four. Four. <laughs> yeah, okay. If I run it, I see that I am currently on line four where hello is going to be assigned to the variable hello. If I write print, oh, this is a big one, I am going to see the PHP, the operands behind the current code. So what are operands? When you write PHP code, it's text. Before it gets executed, it will be first transformed to operands, bytecode. And then this bytecode, if you have bytecode caching mechanism, like opcode um, or APC, it's not going to interpret the text every time. It's going to run the various opcodes. So this is a bit cryptic on that one, but when you see assign, it's just the assign operator, uh, rope app, rope app, rope end. This is for string manipulation, 
like concatenating. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Lisa. Shame. So list the the ten I mentioned here, just the number of lines I want to display. Um, in this case, I can evaluate things. For example, I want to know what undefined variable. So I have the true kit. I'm really inside pH, the core of PHP itself. I think I just have to to step one more line. I see that it creates an assign statement. So he assigned hello to the variable hello. And now if I evaluate word, of course I have to evaluate hello. Yeah, I correctly have a hello. So this is handy. Um, I'm going to show you some other example. I have a loop, an infinite loop. It's going to write a dot and, and so on. So with that one, I can also interfere with the content of, of the engine. <coughs> and then, oh, no, please, then I'm going to break on six. If I run again, no, that doesn't work really well. So I want to break on, let's say, five. So if I do next, 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 I'm going to jump between the two operations that are made here. It's the echo, that's one operation. Condition, that's the other uh, condition. I can do this forever and ever. It's not going to stop. But for example, I can say that I can evaluate some code. And now doing next, and now the script ended because I really interfered with the content of my variable, which is interesting to see what happens in other conditions. It can also display you the, the various upcodes of a little script. So who, who of you is aware that um, single quote strings are faster than double quote ones? A few hands. Who is aware that it really doesn't matter? <laughs> okay, so it's supposed to be a myth, and it's, it is really a myth. Sing single quotes has never been faster, even if you have uh, used the dollar sign into it, a string interpolation. Uh, for example, if I have a, s a little script, single quotes of PHP, or one that is double quotes of PHP, so I have a concatenation of two, of two strings, one with single quotes, the other with double quotes. And if I want to ask DBG to print me the content of, let's say, the first one, single quotes, here you can see that before, uh, while understanding the various operations, instead of, letting, instead of having a concatenation of hello and world every time, here, it's going to assign to the variable greetings, hello world, in one block. Here I see double quotes, but that is just the output format of PHP DBG. If I'm asking the same thing to, with double quotes, I'm going to have exactly the same output. So the operands that will be stored in memory and being run again and again by your output cache is going to be exactly the same output difference here. So if it really matters, try to not use single string just for performance because you have less feature with it than with just regular double strings. This is clear? Yeah. Cool. PHP DBG can also be used to, to debug something uh, if you want to emulate um, a full of request with some underscore dollar underscore get dollar underscore post content and so on you can create a, a script file to emulate the environment and pass it to the to PHP DBG. In the slides, I wrote some examples so that you can uh, later, after this talk, find how I did in the live team. So I'm going to pass, to pass this. The other tool, this one is not native, it's PHP Trace. There is a lot of 
tracing tools that ends with trace. We are going to see a few others. And PHP trace, it's a very low overhead tracing tool. With it, you can connect to uh, a, pr a live PHP process. Um, and as soon as you are not entering the debugging mode of PHP trace, there is no overhead, really zero. So how it works, PHP trace, there are two tools. One command line tool that is going to co connect to your PHP. But to PHP, to be able to talk with this command line tool, it requires a PHP extension, which is also PHP trace. Everything is combined in one project. So you have, like Xdebug, you need a client and some remote code. So if I'm, I'm going to, to create a, a loop that is just going to sleep a little bit, I will again do it in live. So I can run some <coughs> PHP code just on the command line. Here I'm maybe the blue, so it doesn't really matter. So here I created process with process ID that is put here. Uh, so it's another one, three, zero, four, eight. So every time I enter PHP trace with status, I get a status of the process with how many memory has been consumed so far, the peak one. I see the arguments of the current, uh, of, of the current scope. <coughs> For now, I'm in a for loop. And I can see the backtrace of the moment I did the PHP trace status. If I don't provide the status keyword, then I'm going to attach the process. And so for now, the process there is zero over head as soon as I press enter, no. Then there is a little bit over head added to the process because it dumps the information and I can see directly in live where this process is actually. As soon as I interrupt the PHP trace, the overhead that was generated because of it is, uh, is gone. So you can safely use PHP trace in production. If you have something that is stored or in a kind of infinite loop, it's very hard to debug because most of the time you want to reproduce it. You don't know how. You, have, you already have the case, but you don't know how to get there. So it's very interesting to have PHP trace in prod and to be able to attach to a process. So the argument I'm passing here is the number corresponding to the process. In this case, it would be, uh, in your case, might be Apache, PHP FPM, and so on. <coughs> System debugging. I'm done with PHP, because sometimes you have to be outside the borders of PHP. Who is familiar with S-Trace? A few hands. So S-Trace is tracing the system cores that, is be that are between a process, an application, and the system. What does it mean? If I want to open a file, for example, a Nini file or a YAML file, I'm, I'm, I want to read it. The, the system is going to use maybe open, the open function in PHP. But this one just cannot access. I want to read the disk at this place. This is an operation that is handled by the operating system. I ask the operating system, OK, give me an access uh, file descriptor so that I can find in this file. It is going to say, OK, you don't have access to this file, or yes, you have. Here is the file descriptor. And then I can do some processing. This communication is done with uh, system calls. So example of system calls is fopen, because the system calls and the function in PHP is very pretty similar. It's almost just a wrapper around the system calls. <coughs> so again, live demo. Um, what do I have here? Uh, ls.php. I don't know why I have that screen open. Maybe I was debugging. So ls.php is just emulating ls. OK, not really, really fun, but it does work. S trace is quite verbose, and you can just place it. <coughs> excuse me. You can just place it in front of the thing you are going to execute. For example, I can just do ls, just so show, show this, or I can use S trace, and then I do ls. Then I have my output. 
Here I have my output that is combined with the output of LS. Not really practical. Oh, sorry. <coughs> At the end, can you read what's on the screen? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, a little bit late, I know. So, <laughs> I just ask S3 to, 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 to put the output in another file. Thanks VI for the colors. And here I can see all <coughs> all the different information uh, between the PHP process, so it means even the internal code of PHP, including my code, everything is shown here. So most, most of the thing uh, in the first list of the file is about the loading the PHP executable itself. Even without providing mm. any, anything, you're going to have some system calls. For example, the PHP process is going to read a PHP ini file. To read the PHP ini file is going to, to, um, to parse some directories until it finds the one you want to have. Mm -hmm. So the good thing is that I can use, for example, that example to find if something has been the done on, oh, no php.ini. This is, oh, yeah. Why nobody tells me that I was doing LS? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so here, I do it again. Not with, um, not with uh, LS implementation, but with the PHP one. So I have some output. So here I have all the output of PHP. Yeah, it's much, much, much bigger. Might be quite verbose. But now if I, if I look at php.ini, I'm going to see where it tries to. F so here we have an open. It tries to find a php-cli.ini at this path. E no end is the code return when something does not exist. It means no entity. Then next one, next one, and so on. And here, he realizes uh, he found a php.ini file, and it returns me three. Three is just a file descriptor. So if you output the, out the, the result of an f open, the, the number you usually see is a resource. It corresponds to this one. Of course, this is extremely verbose. It contains all kinds of system, uh, of system calls, file, operate, uh, file system calls, networking system calls, memory, memory mapping system calls. If you want to filter, you can just provide the category you want to filter on. So here I, cr I will want to uh, specify the file category. Now I only have the system calls related to the file category. So it means open access, execv, and things like that. Less output. <coughs> you can also remotely uh, attach to a process with minus p and then the process id in a very similar way than with um, PHP trace or the other tracing tool. <coughs> if you want to have a summary, process, um, System calls by system calls, you can pass minus C and you have a, a summary of everything. So the number of the count numbers and so on. <coughs> Ltrace is quite similar to Ltrace. Sorry, it's quite similar to Strace, but for libraries. Uh, libraries is, for example, PHP is not done with external C libraries. If I look where is my PHP, USR bin PHP, I do LDD, USR bin PHP, and I'm going to have some output. <coughs> what does this mean? PHP didn't reinvent all everything, so he wanted to use and reuse existing libraries, like for example, every time you use the curl with curl, curl in it, it's going to use under the hood this library. And if I want to look at all the communication, I can do something very similar. But beware. So here I have an empty PHP file. I just want to see the calls to the libc library by doing php empty. Now I'm taking a coffee. <laughs> Point. Sorry. 
at some point in the events. Try not to run this on a heavy, heavy, heavy project. It's going to be <laughs> run for a long, long time. Here I can see really what are the specific functions of every libraries that are used by PHP and this recursively. So if you, if you call PHP to resolve, like for example, get host by name, this is normally something that is handled by the libresolve.so file. And this one is also needs to open uh, a file like etc host, for example, uh, and you have some chaining between the, the various uh, libraries. You, uh, you can dig uh, into them and try to visualize all of them. It's pretty handy, but it's very, very verbose. So most of the time, using this tool is whenever you know you have something wrong, you have an HTTP proxy in between while using curl, and you really want to figure out what's going on at the, um, at the library level, that's the tool you need. You can also uh, make it less robust by providing the exact library you want to filter. And you can use it without this filter, but good luck. <coughs> I notify. It's not a debugging tool, but who knows what I notify is one hand. Interesting. So I notify. It's a it's a Linux feature. Who um, is pretty similar to um, the event system of Symfony, or it's like an uh, observer pattern on files. I want to be. Um, I want to know whenever you touch this directory or this file, or you open it, you access it, whatever. I want to be notified when you do that. And I notify has nothing to do with PHP or uh, or C or whatever. It's really a Linux feature, and I can demonstrate it like this. I'm inside the same directory here and here. I notify is a is a kernel feature, but if you want to have some command line possibilities, you have to to install an additional package. Most of the time, the name is I notify tools or something very very similar. The two the two uh, the two binaries I'm using here is I notify wait and I notify watch just going to see how I can use it. Here I want to be notified of any change recursively made to this current directory. The watches are in progress. Here I just want to do, for example, ls. And now I can see on the other, on the, on the other part that the Linux kernel system sends a signal to iNotifyWait to prevent, okay, you had an open on uh, on a directory, you had an access on a directory, then you had a, a close without write, a close and the is there, and so on. So even with a very little info, uh, for example, if I do <coughs> a cat test.php, here you saw some output, and I didn't press the enter. Why you can see something is because the tab completion internally used something like ls to know how we can complete. And because of that, he also tried that command. So this is quite cool, and it's not only a debugging tool. If you want, for example, to program with iNotify in mind, for example, you have an upload directory, and every time there is something that needs to be uploaded to this directory, for example, an image, you want to remove some geotags to it, and so on, you are not forced to do it in, into your PHP process. You can ask some tools to be notified arrive by, by uh, subscribing to that kind of event, and then you can easily crop things, uh, put a watermark and whatever you want on the image. It's not, heavy, it's not a heavy implementation, because it's not actively, it's not actively, okay, is this file touch, is this directory touch? No, that's something really, really small. It's whenever a system calls like open to a directory is performed, and there is actually a watch, then the kernel is going to send a notification. So this is a very efficient notification mechanism.
So again, the, uh, I haven't mentioned iNotify Watch. I'm running a bit out of time. So iNotify Watch, it's exactly like iNotify Wait. The, the thing is that it's going to, uh, it doesn't produce an output until you hit Control C, and then it's, you will have a summary of every operations on all directories and all files. That's very handy. Um, if so, why debugging tool? Sometimes I just want to know which files is touching uh, something or when it is touched. So for that purpose, with S trace, it's very handy. <coughs> My SQL proxy, same question. We used we used it. <coughs> One hand, not so popular. My SQL proxy is a proxy. Yeah, you guess that. Mm. And <laughs> the proxy means it sits in between. So what is can be used? What's the use of my SQL proxy? You can do whatever you want it to do, because you can attach to it a little a little Lua script. You have plenty of exi existing Lua script for my SQL proxy. For example, you can say you have an intermediate proxy server. As soon as there is a request for it, I just want to log it in the file and then continue. Request using for ex uh, every select operation using that table, I want the same select with an explain in front of it. And the, uh, the output of that, I want it to be in a file. So you can programmatically create a proxy between your database and your, uh, your program so that you can interfere with how it behaves. Another example is if you want to, for example, query uh, want a log of everything that is not using an index, or log every queries that took more than one millisecond, and things like that. I'm going to show you. You don't see the screen? No. So MySQL proxy, what I have to do is calling MySQL proxy with a script. Here it's a very simple debug.lua script I created myself. Uh, those scripts are online on my GitHub account, so you can, you can take a look thereafter. So here I just enter it. And I'm going to change in one application the port. I'm not going to connect, that's the configuration of my application. I'm not going to connect directly to the usual port, but on 4040. 4040 is the, is the one that is, is used by default by MySQL proxy. I'm taking my application with me. Oh no, I'm actually I'm not going to show you this. You don't want to cry. <laughs> But you are going to cry anyway because you see the output of the SQL generated. Yeah, I just refresh my screen and yeah, there is a lot of queries performed to this. The cool thing is that I can directly visualize what's going on because this is just a script that output things. If I have my cursor, I want my cursor, yes, and I'm using something like grep and I want some from users space dot star home no, no sorry uh, this way I'm going to print only some records I just refresh the screen in my page and oh okay I found some queries to the users table uh, where users ID equals something and it didn't return any results the, the known I'm in my script, I wanted to write known in red to s because qu doing a query and you will receive no result, it's a, it might be dubious, so might be wrong. Um, so that's an example of usage. You can just combine it with red. In the repository I have online, which is going to be here. Then you c I provide various different scripts. 
For example, if you want to emulate a database that is very slow, you can easily create a script that just adds a sleep into it. <laughs> That's a bit nasty, but sometimes if you have one page that is doing a lot of queries, you may not notice because still your, your environment is very fast, but if you do a micro sleep of just a few milliseconds, you can notice because in the end you are going to see one screen that is going to take uh, five seconds instead of five milliseconds. Uh, there is another script that, for example, just sleep, but for the same amount of time than the query, that, uh, the, that the time spent in the query. So it's just about to double the times, and you can add yourself a factor. So if you want to emulate a, a database that is five times slower or anything, you can do that. Uh, another part, uh, if you have multiple database, all selects need to be to the local database, while all update, delete, and insert statement needs to be to a master database. No need to configure a mas um, uh, two connections, one for read and one, one for modifications. You can do that with my MySQL pro proxy script. Networks, that's for networking. I'm sure you know the top command. I haven't a Wi-Fi that works well enough to show you, but it's like top, but for the networks. It requires root access, you, no devices to monitor. It means my Wi-Fi is even not open, so I cannot even enter the command. That's the first time I encountered this. But okay, NetHawks is going to display you per process the bandwidth usage, so if on server you realize that you are a little bit out of bandwidth and you want to know from which process it comes from, which one is your bottleneck, with NetHawks you can just see how many, um, how many kilobytes, megabytes one process is going to consume. You can do that in front of Composer, for example. It's uh, quite interesting. You see it's going high. <coughs> Sorry. No much thanks no more things to mention. Wireshark. This is TCP dump on steroid. You are using it? Yes, many hands. So I'm going to finish uh, with a little presentation of Wireshark. Wireshark is a tool that can replace any um, shell proxy or tools like that. It's a general purpose a uh, debugging tool for network. It can analyze TCP, UDP, whatever, providing uh, some kind of filtering mechanism. So if I want to, for example, TCP port, going to, TCP port HTTP, I guess that would be a good example. And here, if I, it my do I have something here? Yes. So normally here I see all the packets. Those are TCP packets, so it's not very, very readable that way. But those are at certain moment regrouped. So for example, from here to here, it's going to be the TCP packets that forms this HTTP message. So if I want to filter and see only HTTP message here, I do the filter here, I see only HTTP message, and now I can see the various information. I have plenty of them. Like, yeah, I can see the content length, cookies, and so on and so on. Like you have usually in <coughs> Firefox, Google Chrome, and tools like that, you also you have a net console, but sometimes your application is a client in a client server mode. You have a restful application and things like that, or you are doing this remotely. That's difficult to use tools like Google Chrome or Firefox to handle the traffic. And most of the time, this is for HTTP. So as soon as you want to debug the same thing, but at the MySQL level, see what's what's going on between your client, your MySQL client and your MySQL server. Uh, you can use the same tool, whatever the protocol is used. Uh, Wireshark lets you also create dissectors. 
So if you are having your very own implementation of HTTP or REST and you want to create your own inspector to see the traffic, you can quite easily create such a dissector for Wireshark. It's just a bit of C++ knowledge, I think. <coughs> um, that's going to be everything. Do you have questions? Because I presented a lot of things, so I need to have a lot of questions. Fire. Uh, yeah, sure. Take it. Uh, with tools like you mentioned, PHP and PG, is that actually usable for like larger applications? For instance, you mentioned easy publish. Like, uh, like if I have an error that may be coming through in Twig and I'm trying to debug it, and it's in a bundle when it goes through Twig processing and so on, I can't just start at the kernel file and then just walk through all the code that's executed. You know, is there a usable way to set the equivalent of a breakpoint deep down in the code when I start from the command line when I want something in the web process? Yeah, very good question. I. I use PHPDBG a little bit like I use DBG. It means with plenty of macros. PHPDBG comes with an initialization script so that if you want to create your own alias so that you don't want to repeat yourself between every, every request or you want to easily bootstrap uh, a, a, a request with some data into it, you can easily reuse an environment uh, that is already set up for you. And you can also easily share the, the macros on your project because sometimes there are typical points where you want to, to stop and you can share the PHPDBG initialization script in your Git uh, so that the rest of the team can also reuse the, the macro. PHPDBG is also easier than it's about to use remotely when you have different ops and you don't want to set up uh, tunneling, things like that. So, the, in terms of size, I would say it's interesting, but I, it doesn't replace the bug. It's not meant to. It's a complementary, to, complementary tool, and I don't think the size <coughs> really does matters for PHP DBG. Uh, DBG. DBG is very similar, and you can use it on, for example, like Linux kernel to debug something. So. If you have your macros and you have your habits, it's quite efficient. Did I answer the question? Yeah. Somehow. Yeah. Yes. Uh, most of these, uh, Can you please use the mic? That's where it's recorded. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for the talk. Um, most of these programs that you've uh, shown us, uh, are they run on a PHP 5.6 or higher? Or could it be used? So, uh, the tools that is specific to PHP here, I mentioned, is PHP DBG <coughs> and PHP Trace. Both, um, both exist for PHP higher and lower than PHP 5.6. Uh, PHP Trace, I think it existed since PHP 5.4. So, hopefully you are not using PHP 5.4. <laughs> no. I, yeah, okay. Um, if you and PHP DBG existed be before PHP 5.6 as well, it's just that it is now natively included in the core of PHP. So, um, and all the other tools are not related in any way to PHP. So, you can use all of them. Other questions? No? Okay. Ah, yes, one more. Sorry for the others. Do you have any uh, recommendations on resources for diving into Wireshark a little bit better? Mm -hmm. I found something a little bit difficult to get into, especially with, like decrypting TLS and so on. Yes. So Wireshark, if you want to, if you want to debug HTTPS traffic, <laughs> you guess that. Uh, so what you absolutely need to have is the private key on of your server. You need it to set to, you need <coughs> to set your Wireshark uh, to know this uh, private key, and then you are able to to debug your HTTPS traffic. 
depends on your setup, but sometimes you have a load balancer that does the HTTPS for you, and then you have internally HTTP, so it makes things simpler, but it's not always the case. So, thanks for the remark. A last question? No? If you have any questions regarding those tools or anything else, easy publish or PHP internals or whatever, just feel free to, to catch me. Thank you very much.